And now, a little about our presenters. Danielle Cook is a professional nutritionist and cooking instructor, and her sister, Adrienne Cook, is a gardening and cooking writer. We're excited to have them with us for today's Winter Treats and Seasonal Delights live online cooking demonstration. So with that, take it away. Hi, everybody. Hi, everyone. We're 10 days from Valentine's Day. That means that we, we're doing chocolate. This is our annual chocolate fest that we do, that we've been doing for years now. And it's one of our more, most popular, uh, well, what would you call it? Demos. And uh, so that's what we're doing today. We chocolate, love, chocolate. yes, we love coming into Valentine's Day, celebrating with lots of chocolate. And there's so many ways to use chocolate. Yeah. And um, it's just, it's one of the most healthy foods out there, right? Um, full of great flavanols and, and antioxidants. Um, assuming you're eating the right kind of chocolate. So we have two recipes today that we're gonna take you through. Um, I'm gonna get started on the first one, which is um, a stew, a beef stew, which you can use either stew beef or short ribs with. Uh, it's interchangeable. And um, we're gonna combine something kind of cool, a little bit different, orange and chocolate, which is, we associate that so commonly with our, um, as a dessert. But we're gonna dump it into a pot and turn it into sort of a um, kind of a mole kind of a thing. And speaking of desserts, I'll be doing the dessert. Yes, you are. <laughs> but we're not gonna start with dessert. Sometimes we do, but today we are not gonna start with a dessert. Okay. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'll leave you to the kitchen for just a minute. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and, and move us over to a different angle so you can see what I'm doing on my cooktop. Um, and that's going to be a more interesting view for this stew. So I've got lots of things lined up here. Um, I have started warming up my Dutch oven because the first thing you're going to do for this stew, stews, you know, it's winter. You have to figure you're going to get into some uh, time commitment on cooking. Um, that's just, just part of the process with these stews. Um, we're going to start by browning some pieces in some oil. And um, this recipe calls for two pounds of um, two pounds of stew meat, which is a good amount for easily for so depending on how how ravenous your eaters are, four to six people approximately. So we're gonna let that simmer for get brown on all sides. This is obviously not two pounds of stew meat, but we're just we've got I've got some already prepped up and ready to go because for the sake of time, otherwise we would be here till five o'clock this afternoon. And I know, I don't know about you, but I know I've got other things I got to get done. <laughs> so it's important when you brown meat for stews that you not overcrowd the pieces. Um, you want to get a good sear on all sides. And um, depending on the size of your pot, you're going to need to do this probably in, in a few shifts. So getting things well browned, this is a little bit not quite as hot as we need it because we're just, uh, needs another minute to get good and seared. When you're doing this in several batches, you will find by the time you're done getting through all the meat, the bottom of your pan is going to be quite brown. Um, it's going to be pretty caked in little, nice little bits of, of browned um, meat and the juices that will have adhered and that that sort of thing. And that's all good because that's all going to be flavor. That's caramelization, isn't it? Danielle? That's called caramelization. And in fact, you're starting to see it already happen right here in the corner of the pan. Um, <laughs> just a, Yeah, you can see that right there where that piece is. Now, do you cut up your own uh, beef stew or do you buy the uh, already cut up? Um, well, lately, for the sake of time, I've been getting it already cut up. Okay. But, you know, Often when I get it home, I realize the pieces are larger than what I want. So I then end up cutting up the cut up stew meat, <laughs> which seems maybe a little counterproductive, but you know, that's just the way it goes. Um, and you know, the, the sizes, the size of the meat really is a subjective thing, how big or small you want them. And as I mentioned previously, short ribs are an excellent, excellent, use uh, in this recipe so you can do go either way. The short ribs will need more time to cook because they are larger and they 
depending on what you get, sometimes they have a bone in them. You can get boneless short ribs. Um, I like the bone in. I find it to be more flavorful, don't you think? I love the bone in because I think it does infuse through the bone. It just really makes the broth, the, the sauce that you're making with this really, really nice and rich. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but either way, it is, <clears throat> excuse me, it is a fattier um, cut of meat. Yeah, so you, I know I've seen. There's not a lot of marbling in this, but there is a lot of marbling in the uh, in the bone in, um, typically in the bone in uh, uh, short rib. There's a lot of marbling, so it does it does have that very much that sort of enriching. Look at how brown that's getting on the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, we're only for the sake of today's demonstration, we're only using a few pieces right. of meat. So, so there's going to be some that are more marbled than others. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and you know, you can imagine when you when you get done going through two pounds of, of the meat, how brown your pan is yeah. going to be. So these are all the sugars down there too, isn't it? Not just uh, the fat, but it's also the sugar. That's what, what's causing the caramelization. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, there's not a ton of sugars in the meat right now, but it, you're going to see when the, um, the uh, onions get in there, they yes. certainly will right. create even more sugars. Mm -hmm. So... I'm going to go ahead and pull these out um, and go to the next step. So just envision, you know, you're done with sitting here sweating over the searing of two pounds of stew beef. I'm going to move these off into a pan, a separate bowl and set that aside. And then I'm going to bring in some chopped onion. And this is a uh, one large onion, medium to large onion, that you're going to also brown. And we're going to start building flavors in this way. And what I usually like to do at this point uh, when I'm cooking, when I'm doing the foundation of a stew or a soup, is to go ahead and sprinkle a little salt in. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of salt. I do that so that the Onions can start releasing their moisture, and it and it actually does help build the the multiple layering of flavors that is so important in a good rich stew. And it smells so good. It, it sure does. Hey, it smells Danielle, great. yeah. Since you're talking about seasoning the stew, there, do you season the meat first as well, or did you just put it straight in and it gets all its flavor later? So uh, that's a great question. Most recipes or many recipes say salt and pepper your meat. Um, I don't salt meat before because I think it sucks out the juices too quickly. Um, and peppering would be fine if you're into pepper. I'm, we're going to add, I'll do pepper towards the end. I'll adjust with salt and pepper. But I, I don't know about you, Adrian, but I do not salt my meat before I sear it. When, the, when it's a, the short rib, when I use a short rib, I go ahead and do it that way. Do I you? Do salt them, yeah, because they're much larger than these little pieces of, of, of uh, beef. But I would agree with you that I think you probably want to avoid it when you're using smaller pieces of meat. But I think the short ribs, you could, you could definitely do that. And it gives it, it gives the pull, you know, that brown stuff at the bottom, yeah. a little bit more flavor too. Yeah, I think what you're doing is great. It smells wonderful. Yeah, I mean, I always salt. Um, I, you know, I do a little pinch of salt to get the vegetables going. Yes. But I, I tend to not salt the meat until I'm ready to taste. Okay. Or towards the end of cooking. I know there's differing opinions on this or differing styles. Okay. And the next thing we're going to add is some garlic. That's something that can't go in right away. It has to go in like, at this stage of the game. Because otherwise it's going to get too brown. Right? It's not only going to get too brown, but it's also, you'll get a different, you'll get like, um, it'll become like a roasted garlic as opposed to that right. that really strong garlicky, healthful taste. Right. That is so wonderful. Okay, so that's now nice and fragrant. And... The next thing we're going to put in is a little bit of tomato paste, and I've got tomato paste in a tube. So we need a couple tablespoons. You can either measure out from a can, or you can do like me, which is just to eyeball it. Oh, that looks good. <laughs> now this functions not just for flavor, but also it um, helps uh, create a, a nice uh, texture to the sauce because it. it oh yeah, it, it helps thicken it. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. 
definitely it helps thicken things. Okay, so do that. Ready to deglaze? Yeah, ready to deglaze. Now, deglazing can come in multiple fashions for stews. I did a stew last week in which I deglazed and flambéed in, in brandy. Um, but that's not the match we're going to do today. Today we're going to work with some red wine and some beef stock. Now, um, if you are not into using any form of alcohol to deglaze, that's totally fine. You would just add, do this with some additional broth. So um, leave out the wine. Leave out the wine. I mean, the wine will, the alcohol is going to burn off in this. So, you know, mm -hmm. there's not going to be a, a real concern about alcohol remaining in here because we're going to reduce it um but and it does bring in a wonderful richness to mm -hmm. the to this stew mm -hmm. that said uh I, I you know if you're not if you're not one to have any of that in the house that's that's fine so you can see here i think um the bottom of the pan is looking pretty brown i mean a nice deep brown rich and it's really kind of stuck on there. And that's all good because that we're, again, we're building some depth of flavor. You just don't want to scorch it. Yeah. Well, you're not going to. There's enough moisture in the yeah. here still. Okay. And now in goes our red wine. Um, and that'll clean all that brown stuff off the bottom. That's right. You can just hear it. You know, yes. cooking is about smelling. It's about seeing. It's about you know, watching what's going on and hearing. Uh, and you can hear that nice sizzle. sizzle of flavor starting to really come together nicely. So as that bubbles, we're gonna add some thyme. And is this from your garden? This is not from my garden. My garden thyme is taking a breather right now. <laughs> it's taking a long winter's snooze. And that Yes, but I was actually able to harvest off of it up until probably a month ago, and yeah. then it really went dormant. So this is um, this is not mine, but this is uh, a good this is good time anyway. And I always like to crush it just to start releasing the aroma mm -hmm. into into the dish. So rather than just shake it from your spice jar, do you ever use powdered thyme? I, I do not use powdered thyme. I don't either. I like it. I like the leaves. The leaves, I like everything to try to get it in its most original form. And then yes. and then if I wanted it really ground, I could grind it with a mortar and pestle. Mm -hmm. um, but the powder, the powder is, um, it doesn't last either. It doesn't. You're right. <clears throat> it really dissipates. Okay. This is looking really nice. So at this point, your hard work folks is pretty much done now yeah now we're going to add back our beef and if you can hand me the other container there we have some other beef that's all you know beautifully browned up that i did this morning so we'll go ahead and add that in thank you and with that we will add the broth. So this is beef broth broth that I'm using. I actually, full disclosure, I did not make that. That is not a homemade beef broth. Um, but I did I did buy it. There's lots of good ones that you can get in the even in the freezer section. Bone broth, uh, fresh frozen. That's really takes. I mean, I do like making homemade broth. I make chicken broth um, a lot, and. Um, I do make beef broth, but I today I did not have it on hand. You okay, Neil, could could you substitute in chicken broth if you wanted to here yes. instead of the beef? Yes, you could definitely substitute. You could it. even put a rich uh, vegetable stock in here if you have that. Yeah, you could. You know what would be nice is something a vegetable broth that has a homemade one that has mushrooms. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. Okay, and then bay leaves very important in stews. We might like this nice little bay leaf it has a little citrus flavor that just really is incomparable and it, it without it it's like it's, there's something missing you know so the citrus is great the other thing that is amazing because we're using chocolate in this is some cinnamon so we're going to put in this is kind of a big piece so i'm gonna oh, maybe i can just pull back there we go i'm gonna do 
a, like a half a cinnamon. I don't want to overwhelm the stew with yeah. the cinnamon, but this combination makes it like a real amazing winter dish. And then a tablespoon of really good cocoa. Oh, I've already got a serving, I've already got a measuring spoon buried in there. How about that? Okay. Um, one tablespoon. You can taste later and decide if you want to add more than that, but I really, I would say that that's not, one tablespoon's good. I, I've done this before with like two, or even two and a half, um, and it um, gives it that really rich taste, which we need to talk about in a second. But then the last part is the orange peel. Okay, now the richness of the chocolate is comes from the the amount of flavanols that are in there. That's the cocoa, the, the, the percentage of cocoa really is the driver on the richness of the flavor of the chocolate, right? So um, the higher the percentage of cocoa, the richer the flavor, um, and the higher the flavanol content, which is what is what makes it so good. So, so what are you talking about? What percentages do you go for? Good question. So if you want the full health benefit, you need to be eating chocolate that's at least 60% and ideally 70 and above percent cocoa. Which is ideal for cooking, but it's not great in the chocolate bar. Well, yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> well, to find chocolate bar, milk chocolate doesn't really count because yes. the, the amount, the percentage of cocoa in a milk chocolate bar is fairly, uh, I wouldn't say useless, but it's not about the health components right. there. That's milk and chocolate and, and, and it's milk and it's sugar. Right. Um, so, you know, you really need to uh, be looking at uh, the, the cocoa content. So, so we do, we do go for the high, much higher uh, levels uh, always when we're doing cooking, when we're cooking with chocolate, even making chocolate, chocolate, uh, you know, like cocoa. Yes. Now what I used in this is unsweetened cocoa. Um, you can also use uh, Dutch uh, processed. processed. What does that mean? It essentially is a process in which they uh, remove uh, some of the flavanols to get a milder flavored cocoa. And the Dutch process, you can actually find it, it's a, in a range of color. It can be very light and right up until very, very dark, almost black uh, look cocoa. Um, and that is, it's just a, it's a process of removing some of the flavanols. So you do lose some of the health benefit slightly, but you get a milder uh, chocolate flavor um because the the flavanols the, the cocoa really in its full force it's very astringent yes yes so i'm gonna actually let this go and i will show you uh normally what we would do is um let that simmer for a good hour hour and a half and then um an, about an hour into it add chopped carrots um and let it cook for another hour or so and i will show you the finished product here. I'm gonna carefully move and switch these around. I'm gonna move that off to the side. And I have one right here that I can show you that's all done. And this will be dinner tonight. And you can see, I think, the richness of the color, how dark it is, how dark everything has become. And like it's a real, you can really see that chocolate it's like almost looking at chocolate sauce um and then before you serve you're going to want to remove the cinnamon stick and fish out your bay leaves um but it's just it's just this what about the uh, where where's the orange you leave the orange in i assume so the orange some of it just kind of melts away oh i see there's but some. there's there's a little piece i leave it in because it's very tender and soft um yeah you know, and but a lot of it has, I mean, I had long strings in here. There's one. But some of it just literally just melts, melts away. Like I can't, I can't even pick that up because it just crumbled. Okay. See? Yep. So as you're stirring in the course of this braising and you check on it periodically and you get your spoon in there, you're probably going to end up breaking down a lot of the, the orange peel. Yeah. 
But I don't think there's anything unpleasant about eating no, orange peel. Not at all. When not you all. when you peel the orange, you want to try to make sure you get just the orange part and not much of the white part. So you, that's the pith, which tends to be very um, bitter. bitter. Yeah. So um, I want to switch back so we can answer, field any questions that you guys might have, and then um, sort of do a quick turnaround setup so we can um, we can get ready for dessert. So questions. Yeah, so we did have a question. Someone wanted to know uh, if there's any veggie substitute you could suggest for the beef. Oh, yes. Well, um, I think what pops to mind with that, you can make this with um, large uh, pieces of uh, portobello mushroom. And for your broth, you would use a vegetable broth. As we mentioned uh, earlier, it would be great if you had a homemade uh, vegetable broth that had mushroom in it. So you would get you'd go in a different direction, but without question, uh, the portobellos and the cocoa and orange, that whole combination would be delicious. And you'd want to sear the portobellos just like you do with the beef, right? I think probably yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't need to, you don't need to wait until they're completely. No, but I think just sear soft, them. But yeah, just give them a. Get, get that foam going at the bottom mm -hmm. just like you do. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Be terrific. Awesome. Thank you. Um, what type of onion are you using? Is there a specific type? A regular, a regular yellow onion. I, I this is a hearty, this is a hearty winter stew. So I'm not going to look for those sweet summer onions. That's that's a different thing. I want the I want that allium. I want the the the, the real sulfur from the onion and garlic to to stand up to this. So um, yeah, the stronger the yellow onion, the better. <laughs> <laughs> Your eyes should be watering. <laughs> and what about the wine? What is there a particular type of uh, wine that you should do? Go for like a lighter red or a more intense red? Um, no, you want to go for something that's that's um, fairly hearty, a, a cab or a Syrah. Um, Beaujolais. Beaujolais is a little light. Okay. Um, but um, what I had in here was, it was an old bottle. It was a Portuguese wine, and I, I, I'm i not going to show it to you because I it has a profanity written on the front of the bottle, and I stuck it off to the side, <laughs> and it's uh, blank wine for cooking. <laughs> so, so, you know, if you open a bottle and it's just like not doing it for you, don't throw it out. You can use it in, you can use it in your stews. Great. And what can we serve it on? Oh, uh, egg noodles, wide egg noodles, oh, for yeah. sure, mashed potatoes, um, rice, um, or, you know, if you don't want to do that kind of a carb load, you can do um, some, uh, you can serve it on butternut squash um, oh, yeah. or on spaghetti squash, as yeah. a, you know, mm -hmm. so any of those. Um, and you could even, if you want to be super healthy, you could even serve it on a, a big bed of sauteed uh, kale greens, you know, so. My favorite, I think, is the uh, mashed potatoes, or maybe the noodles. I love the egg noodles. You, I thought that you would get, go, you would say scallop potatoes. Ooh, that's a good one. How about scallop potatoes? Yeah. <laughs> okay, those all sound delicious. Yes. Um, I, have, too, right? Just <laughs> I have two more questions for you. Uh, one is, can you use powdered cinnamon, cinnamon if you don't have a cinnamon stick? Yes, but go very judiciously, as in um, an eighth of a teaspoon, um, because you, you just, you really don't want to overpower it. The nice thing with the cinnamon stick, uh, you could even pull the cinnamon stick out after an hour if you feel like you're getting a very intense aroma from the cinnamon. It, it, the cinnamon sticks vary in intensity, you know, and it depends on how long your cinnamon stick has been sitting in your closet or in your pantry, right? So um so cinnamon at an eighth of a teaspoon you can start with and then you might want to add a little bit later if you're not getting enough of the yeah i think it, in my experience uh when i'm doing stews and even uh chilies with lots of ingredients and i like to put a little cinnamon but literally like just a little amount i think a quarter of a teaspoon is going to be too much on this in the ground form yeah so okay. an eighth of a teaspoon Great. Uh, and then last one before we jump over to Adrian, and that's, uh, can you make this in an Instapot or a pressure cooker? Oh, yes. I love my my uh, my crock pot. Actually, I, I use it in a slow cooker. You can do it in an Instapot, uh, you know, and if you're really good, if you have a pressure cooker and you're really comfortable with it, 
Um, you can do it in there. My only, my only um, sort of advice is, you know, with certain pressure cookers, the, the, the liquid goes out the top. So you need to be very mindful of that because you don't want to end up with a scorched stew. Um, the pressure, the Instant Pots are more, they're much easier to control than an old fashioned pressure cooker. Um, but you can switch it all over and stick it in a slow cooker too for several hours. It's delicious. The meat just ends up being like butter. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, well, I think if you're ready, let's toss it over to Adrian and get into dessert land. Okay, that sounds yeah. like a plan. We're gonna have some more. I'm standing by. We're some more conversations on 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 chocolate here and cocoa, different kinds of cocoa and chocolates. So okay, um, so I don't know how much you can see here, but but uh, we've got we've got a couple different kinds of chocolate. This is uh, Danielle. What is, is this? The seventy uh, percent. Yes, that's okay. Bittersweet. Are we wanting to uh, look look overhead, or are we just looking at you directly right now? Yeah, I was just going to show okay. you. Okay, perfect. Two. Yeah, and then next to it is the ruby chocolate. I don't know if you all know about ruby chocolate or not, but it's a it's a pink chocolate. And when I first learned about this, I thought it was just white chocolate that had that had um, food coloring in it. But it turns out that in fact, ruby chocolate comes from chocolate. That is that is red. That is pink or red or purple. And the the uh, the actual uh, cocoa beans, cacao beans, are, are are have a red tinge to it. And they've been removed from the regular ones, segregated, and turned into a different, a new. I wouldn't say new. I guess maybe it's been maybe five or ten years since this was really started. Um, but uh, a relatively recent development in this confection. And I've used it on cookies. This could be used on a, on a tort like the one I'm making today. I haven't tried it with the, with the ruby yet. It has a little bit of a flavor of raspberry. It's kind of fruity. It's very nice. It doesn't have a strong chocolate taste. So I'm sticking with the regular chocolate because I think that's what we want for Valentine's Day. But it's just a thought. You can, you can find it online. I have not seen it at the stores yet. These are chips. You can find different ones, of different, you, know, you can find bars and, and other things like that. I'm going to taste one. Okay, you go for that. And just to, I'm doing my Martha Stewart thing here. I want to show you the eggs that my neighbor brought me that we're going to be using today. <laughs> what? You didn't, you didn't come out to your hen house no, and get them oh, this morning? No, no, I don't have any hens. <laughs> um, but um, I just thought they are so beautiful. I'm going to tell them that we put it on the live stream today. <laughs> I hope you'll be impressed with that. They're gorgeous. Know, but they are Blue really, eggs. really beautiful. So let's get going. Okay. Uh, we're going to start. Wanted you're gonna bring the tray over and yeah. we're gonna start with um a, a chocolate that i got that is wafers which is one of my favorite ways of of using uh of culinary getting culinary chocolate it's just these wafers and they're you know they they melt fast and are you going over to let's go over to the yeah cooktop switch me over yeah there you are okay it's on it's on yep so we're gonna dump this in. Now I had said in my um, instructions that you probably want to do this either in a microwave or on a double boiler. Uh, I find that I can manage this with um, in a regular pan, but you've got to be very, very careful and keep that heat low while this melts. The best way, in my opinion, or in my experience, I should say, is doing it in the microwave, which takes about literally one minute to get this all melted. And we're just going to keep going here. That's a lot of butter. It is. This is two sticks of butter. It's a half a pound. Okay. Well, what's life without a half a pound of butter? That's right. And these, you know, you're only going to have a very small amount of this very rich um, tort, at least at one serving. <laughs> you might end up eating the whole thing, but hopefully you'll do it over the course of maybe a week or something. But if you share, you won't actually get that much butter. But it's like anything else. It's for Valentine's Day, right? So it's well, not really something that we do every day of the week. So the darker the cocoa that you use, or the darker the chocolate that you use, the milder the flavor actually is. Um, which you wouldn't think of that, but yes, that's that's the way it goes. Um, and um, you know, cocoa is so the chocolate, the flavanols are so important for health. 
um, that, uh, you know, they really, they, they serve as, uh, they rejuvenate our cells and they, they really are very preventative for artery blockages and preventative for um, clots and uh, artery plaque. So, it counteracts the butter. It counteracts the butter. You took the words right out of my mouth. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So here it's already melted, and and I turned it off because it was doing just fine, and letting itself go here without having a, a, a flame under it, and. There we have it. It's all beautifully mixed together. Are you are you good I now? You're ready to switch back over to the counter. Okay, so let's just um, take a quick pause. Any quick questions here while I readjust things for us? Nope, we're ready. So, to yeah, so yeah, this, I think you're ready to just jump on in. Keep going. This tort has um, has flour in it, which a lot of chocolate torts aren't flourless, and that's we've done those before, and they're wonderful. And certainly for people who have gluten issues uh, or just prefer to have something that has no flour who are watching their carbs, um, then, you know, you can go that route. But this has a little bit more cakiness to it, which, and it's not, doesn't have much flour in it. Um, so can you pass me the uh, bowl? Yeah. Thank you. Put it right on there. All right. So we're going to go ahead and pour this right in here. Mm -hmm. A little bit hot. See, this is the reason why I like to do it in the microwave because I can do it right in my bowl and then I don't have to dirty another pan. I'll just leave this here until I get my... Yep. So here we are. Now we're going to add sugar. And you're going to need four eggs for this? We're going to need four eggs for this. Four of my beautiful eggs. Okay. And we're cooling this down as we're adding the sugar because you can't put the eggs in there when the chocolate is hot or they'll, they'll curdle. They'll start cooking. Yeah. We don't want that. So this is a cup of sugar. You can add it all at once. This there is just... Just regular white sugar, this right? This is just not... regular white sugar, um, and there's no reason to spend a lot of money on special sugar for this. I can tell you that. All you want is the uh, <laughs> is, is enough sugar to make it taste delicious. And then um, I'm going to add a little bit of chocolate liqueur. This is Godiva chocolate liqueur. Yum. Which is uh, probably something they made up. I don't know. I don't, it doesn't have a name besides chocolate liqueur. If you don't have that, can you do something else or you just it's, This that? is optional. The thing about this one has a little almond flavor to it. So you could just go with an almond, uh, like a, uh, just a little bit of almond um, extract, but don't go overboard with that. I would go maybe, you know, three or four drops because it can overwhelm and you don't want that chocolate flavor to disappear. That's the whole point what of this. What about using um, vanilla? No, I wouldn't put vanilla in it. What? <laughs> really? No, there's no reason for it. Okay. No reason for it. Okay, now we're gonna add our, we're gonna, oh, let's, okay, let's get the eggs in first. Here we go. One beautiful egg. Let's see how hot this is. No, it's fine. Mmm. Yum. One at a time. Get that going. And Danielle's doing me another one here. We just gotta incorporate it fully. This goes together pretty fast. In fact, uh, do you want the bigger whisk? Or are you okay with uh, that? I think I'm okay with that for right now. Where is my, what happened to my, um, I think it's in the sink. I didn't get my pan ready. That's okay. Let's do another egg. It'll only take a second to spray the pan, I think. Here we go. Oh, this shell is very hard on this funny egg. Wow. That's interesting. It's a, a kind of a strong hen. A brownish egg. It's a green, almost a green egg. And we need one more, right? Because we're doing four eggs? Yep. Okay, here you go. One more. See how the, the consistency kind of changes? It's, it's almost gel-like. Gel yes. yes, it is. You can even you can see just the color and the consistency. Here we go. Okay. And one more. No, All right, now. That's it. Great. And I'm going to add 
I'm going to add the flour, which is only a third of a cup. Let's get that egg completely absorbed here. Yum. I think I'll probably I'm going to switch now to a spoon because otherwise it's going to get all caught in my whisk. We don't really need the whisk anymore. Now, how many would you say this serves? Oh, I think like you could. Wood. It is. And it's uh, in that little pan that I have. It's actually quite deep. Uh, which you could use a slightly larger pan and make it thinner, but it does collapse after, you'll see, it does collapse after it, it rises, because this does rise in the oven, but then it collapses back down again. So I, I like the size of the pan for this, and, and each of the pieces is probably only going to be maybe a half to a, you know, probably about an inch and a half or so wide, maybe, maybe two inches wide. So you could probably get eight servings out of this. Um, especially with the whipped cream on it, it's very rich. It is so delicious. And you know, the next day it tastes even better. So do this in advance because it gets that incredibly thick, kind of almost chewy, not chewy, I mean, that's the wrong word. Almost like a fudgy, fudgy kind fudgy, of Fudgy, yeah, yeah. And we're gonna just finish this off. And then I've got a little bit of salt. You wanna get the salt in there, it just, enlivens everything you know it, it brings the all the taste together wow that's a lot of it's salt. a teaspoon just a, a teaspoon. teaspoon just oh, a teaspoon okay that's all it is just a teaspoon of salt but you do want to get that in there and then finally last but not least we've got our berries can you see this i'm going to put them right in front here see that these are fresh raspberries you can use fresh or frozen and we're just going to break them up a little bit and pop them in. Now, one of the ways you can go here is to go ahead and make a sort of a raspberry syrup or a, a raspberry, um, squeeze them in, I mean, uh, run them through a, uh, a Cuisinart and then, and then, or a, any food kind processor. of, any food processor or even a blender. And then um, uh, get out the, if you, if you don't like the seeds, you can run them through a strainer and get out, get out the seeds. But um, I like it like this, and I don't mind the seeds, so I'm leaving them as fresh and whole as possible. Of course, they're going to cook in the oven, but but they they will they will add all this flavor. And I don't like to add sugar to the raspberries because I think it's just a nice contrast to the sweetness of the. Um, so how much ra how many how much raspberry do you it's have? Just, it's just a container, you know, one of those little one of the pints. Pint, yeah, I guess the, it's a pint. The yeah, the half pints. The Oh, the little low, the low flat one. The little one. low flat one that you can get in the mm -hmm. supermarket that usually sells for yeah. three ninety nine. Okay. I'm leaving a few out here because I want to put, use those for decoration for the top. So there we are. Look at that. Yum. Everybody should get a good raspberry in each bite. So cocoa beans are, it's a, to get to the point where we're using a chocolate in our kitchens, it's a very long process, right? I mean, these beans, have to be, their the pods need to uh, be ripened and then they're split open and they're all full of the cocoa beans. Put the rest of this yeah. in here, just a little bit more chocolate left in the bottom of the pan. Don't want to lose, don't miss any out on any of it. And where's the, uh, where's my pan? Right okay. in front of you. Oh, there it is. <laughs> and the, um, Spray right here in front of you. Oh, bless your heart! You're so good. <laughs> what Danielle, would you do without Danielle me? keeps me. I, I'm not used to doing these as much as she is because she's been doing so many of these right here in her kitchen, and she's just been wonderful letting us like, use her kitchen. So this is just a regular pan, you know, that you put in. It's got it's got this uh, silicon edge, uh, so it's not actually a spring load. But if you have a spring load instead of one of these, the spring load works great. We're just going to pop this down. And I'm going to use a, a spray. You see this? Here we go. I'm just using a regular spray that's got um, both um, the flour and the oil in it. So it just it really releases beautifully. Do you really need it? Because that's a that's a nonstick pan. You've got. I know, but I'd like to do that because it really does make it. I mean, I don't know if it makes a difference or not. But if this thing doesn't come out right, you know, you just you want to. It's it's gonna not be not be great. Thank you. And it doesn't add any flavor or take away any flavor. You don't you just don't taste it. it. Just slides right out. So why not pour this right in here? 
Shall we not hold it? Okay. I think I'm good. Look at that. Yum. That looks good. That looks nice and chocolatey. Yes, that's what we've got. And I'm sure probably it would look quite pink if we were using the, the ruby chocolate. Um, yeah, but the flavor wouldn't be the same. The flavor I, I, wouldn't I don't be the same, you, but you know, I, I, I'm not, you know, I would never, I would not, bleh, excuse me, I would not <laughs> do, I would not do a chocolate cake without a really good quality cocoa, mm -hmm. dark cocoa. Sure. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. You're not wrong, especially at Valentine's Day. We're wasting Adrian, yes. what size is that baking pan? This is an eight inch. Nine eight. Eight. I don't actually, could be nine. No, it's eight. I think it's, it's eight. eight. I can tell by looking at it. Okay. So this is ready to go in the oven, 350 degree oven for a half an hour, and then you just let it sit in the oven for about 10 minutes. You take it out, you put it in the refrigerator, and the next thing we're going to do is bring out our cake and our whipped cream, and we are going to start decorating. Whoop, thank you. So here we are, finished baked cake. You can see that it rose and then it sank again. And as you can see, I think you can see, see the depth of it is probably, I'm guessing it looks to me like about two inches. So each slice is only going to be maybe this wide. At least, I don't know. I mean, you know, you're, you're going to know your guests and the people you're serving much better than I do. Maybe they're going to want a lot more than that. And we're going to, we've got a bowl here of whipped cream. Mm -hmm. Beautiful whipped cream. I'm going to add a little Kahlua to this. We promised Kahlua, so we're going to do Kahlua. There we go. That'll give it a little extra flavor. Now, in this whipped cream, I just whipped it with a little bit of sugar. So there's two cups of cream and about a quarter of a cup, a little less than a quarter of a cup of of um, sugar. And then this little bit of um, Kahlua that we just added is giving us a little bit more sweetness to it. And we're just gonna put that on top, like so. Look at that. Yum! You've got a oh my God. I can't wait till everybody gets home for this one, Danielle. Mm. I think this is something that they are going to enjoy for dinner tonight, or maybe you can keep it for 10 days and serve it the next at Valentine's Day. I doubt that. I don't think it's going to last 10 days. Okay. Wow. Let's put this aside. And we're going to just put a little bit of these in here. You don't have any. Um, oh, well, I use it a little bit of your, the, just the, the unsweetened cacao. You can put the unsweetened cacao on it. A little dusting? Yeah, a little dusting, don't you think? Yeah. And one more. That there would go. be pretty. I mean, you, you would have to do that like right last minute, right? Because it's going to. It's going to end up disappearing. Uh, it probably will. Thank you. That's an awful lot there. Yeah. Oop. There we go. You could actually do this with cinnamon, too. Speaking of powdered cinnamon. Yeah. Well, yeah. You'd have to go easy on it, though. Yeah, right? you would. Or you could put a little bit of uh, espresso. Oh, that would be good. You could do chocolate chocolate chips i mean chocolate, chocolate. Uh, sprinkles like jimmy's <laughs> yeah. yeah look at that that's enough don't you think i think that's beautiful okay there we but go first you have to eat your stew before you get your dessert <laughs> and where here we go put all this back in here okay right. how does that look pretty great mm. it looks delicious yes here we are you gonna show off my stew too? And there's with a little with a little, little gremolata, a little gremolata topping. Look at that, Chuck yummy hearty beef stew. The so, what do you think? Wouldn't this be, make a great Valentine's Day dinner? Yeah. You know, uh, you could make a little pear salad to go with it with some chocolate shavings on the pears, and you got an all chocolate dinner. 
Any questions? Should we go back to us? Yeah. Yeah, while you're flipping back to, to the other screen there. Um, can you use blueberries or other berries in this recipe? Yes, that's a great question. You can use cherries, uh, ras um, strawberries would be delicious. Yeah, yeah. Uh, blackberries, blueberries, you absolutely can use all that. I wouldn't go with bananas, but you could use, uh, you probably could use mango. Uh, and I haven't tried with oranges, but I bet it would be good with oranges. Oh, well, chocolate and oranges. Yes, I know. If you're having it for your main meal. You may as well circle back around. You know what would be really pretty is the zest, the long orange zest. zest. Mm -hmm. That would be really, would Beautiful. taste great. And yeah. it would be so pretty. And you could you could flavor it with Grand Marnier. Yeah. So, yeah. I feel like taking you through. Can I do some zest on there and then we can look at it? Yeah, if you want to. Yeah. What else? Any other All questions? Right. While, while she's zesting, um, could you could you use Kahlua in the cake itself? I know you put some in the whipped cream, but there was a question about if you could put it in the cake as well. The what? Did you put Kahlua in the cake? I didn't put Kahlua in you the cake. Could you could I, you. You absolutely could do that. Um, you know, with the raspberries, I think it would be lovely. And and it it just I think it all oh, look at that now. That's that's lovely. I'll 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 show you on the overhead in just a second. Let me Finish my artsy work here. Yeah. And while she's zesting, could you use um, alternate flowers for this, like an almond flour or something? Yeah, you, can. you can use almond flour. You can use um, uh, oat flour. Um, you can use the all-purpose gluten-free flour. You can. Yeah. It's really it's good. It's not very much flour that's in here, so it doesn't. It uh, you you've got a lot of leeway with it. And with all the eggs, you're still going to get the rising. So yeah, that is lovely. Okay, switch it over so we can see that. It yeah. looks like something you bought at a bakery. It, <laughs> oh, wow, that's gorgeous. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, that's very pretty. Okay. So, yeah, don't don't uh, rule out the importance of zest. You know, orange in this one is uh, the flavor, and it's, you know, they're full of good oils, vitamin C, citrus oils, and all good stuff in these. And it's wintertime, so it's citrus season. So there we have it, and uh, and like I said, um, one one of the things that's my oven, my oven <laughs> one, one something that we have actually on our website is the uh, pear salad that we did that we did uh, a couple of years ago, uh, which is uh, would would be a really nice. Uh, and of course, we got to do our potatoes or egg noodles with the stew. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I have I had one more question that came in. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, we're using fresh orange peel. This person would like to know if it would be too heavy to glaze the peel first and then add it. Glaze the orange peel? Yeah, you could use candied. Are you talking about, uh, I would think that would be like using candied orange peel? Yeah, you could if you wanted to take the time to do that. I mean, it seems a little bit more labor intensive than you need. Um, but if you have some handy, that would I think that would be very nice. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, fantastic. Thank you. That's it. Other questions? Um, did you talk? I can't. I'm sorry. Did you um, talk about if you can't do this the day before? How close to serving time can you do it? Do it two days before. <laughs> no, um, I think you could do it in the morning if you're planning on serving it for dinner, but just make sure it gets it gets into the uh, refrigerator for a, more than an hour. Anything up to you know, anything beyond an hour is going to be good, but an hour is the absolute minimum you want it in the refrigerator. And the longer, I, I, if you do do it the day before, you will see the difference because it really does compact and compress in the refrigerator. It solidifies that dough, the cooked dough that's there in there, and it just makes it very fudgy. When you take it out and you bring it to room temperature, it will return to that kind of more fluffy, cakey uh, flavor so or texture so either one works great and they're they're both terrific it depends on which you prefer in terms of the uh, the texture that you like you try both and 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 have two different versions of this with just one cake by leaving it a little longer in the refrigerator yeah I mean yeah. stew is the same you know stews uh, most stews are better if you can make them a day in advance and let them sit mm -hmm. um, and that's what I do I like to do with this I I get it going and then I do cook it off the next day with the with the little um nice little carrots sweet carrots so i start the meat and then you know tr transfer over the next day so it's a great do ahead meal and um 
if you happen to want to be celebrating this year, uh, it's on a Monday, so Valentine's Day is on a Monday, so you can spend Sunday afternoon baking and braising. Well, and you know, um, uh, just to, to reiterate what Danielle said, they're, they're very compatible in the sense that they both keep a long time in the refrigerator. This, this cake will keep at least a week, so if you want to do it even a week ahead of time, it'll still be fine the following week. Uh, but but I certainly two, three, four days would be great, and the day before is really ideal. But um, I've got a piece that I've had in the refrigerator for about two weeks, and I just keep a little bit, <laughs> nibbling a little bit. Because I, I had to recipe test this, of course. A few and, times. Yes, a few times, and, uh, and, and my husband won't eat it. So, I mean, he's eaten enough of it already, so he's stopped. But, yeah, it's still good. It's still good. After two weeks, huh? Uh -huh. I'm surprised it lasts. It's like long. a chocolate bar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. That is awesome. Well, you're getting lots of love uh, in the chat. And a uh, few people asking if they can just come on over to your house and uh, <laughs> you know, come on over lunch. Um, can, you, can you freeze the stew? Dinner's at seven, folks. Come on. <laughs> um, someone did ask if you could freeze the stew also. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. No, no worries about that at all. It freezes very well. Yeah, and and the, the cake will too, but I don't think you need to. <laughs> Just keep it refrigerated for two weeks. You can. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are almost up on time here, so I just want to thank you both so much for your time and your energy today. This has been a fantastic, fantastic demo, um, and thanks to everybody else who joined us. Thank, Thank you, you all. all for coming. It was a, just a joy. <laughs>